All right. Oh. Uh, in addition to being on mute, we should probably also kill this sound. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Um, so it's been an eventful couple of weeks, and obviously the big event is that uh, we're currently having a meeting here in London. Um, after this hangout, we'll be going out for drinks with uh, some additional folks from the London community. Tomorrow we'll be in Cambridge. But uh, a lot more has happened as well, so let's, uh, let's do a screen share, actually, um, and start going through. I've posted the, um, the project minutes for today. Um, uh, I think everybody should have them. But OK, so let's, let's kick off. So first of all, I just want to remind everybody that we have milestones on GitHub. Uh, and they have issues, and those issues have, uh, are currently marked with uh, what people are working on and, um, and what they're not. So if you have not updated what you are, what you have under this label to working, um, please do. If there are things you're working on that aren't on here, um, please add them and add the working label, just so that everybody can see. OK, dispatch that quickly. Openworm Wiki continues to be worked on. All right, third point. John White. I think that happened since the last uh, Hangout. So John White, uh, the father of the Connectome, has uh, emailed us out of the blue and said that he likes our project and um, would like to help. And so, and then I followed up in, in that conversation and asked him if um, he would be willing to be, on a, to be on a Hangout with us, and he said yes. And then, uh, in speaking with Steve, yes, he said yes. And, and um, in speaking with uh, Steve Cook, I, I realized that Steve Cook is his student. Um, Steve Cook studied with John White for three years, but wasn't the one who told him about the Open Worm Project, which was also really interesting. So um, anyway, I think making it a journal club will make a lot of sense. Um, I have uh, hopefully we'll set this up uh, to get him up with the Google Hangout soon. But um, Steve said that he's a, he's a very enthusiastic guy and um, will probably be very happy to help us. So. Look forward. Um, yes. Okay. Yes. Probably would be a separate one. Yeah. We probably would review the original. Let's try to let's try to keep the conversation through going through the, the hang up. Um, we probably would um, uh, review the paper that was the original connectome paper of the C. Elegans that he was the first author on, uh, the one the 1986 paper. Okay. So anyway, so that's very that's very neat. Um, going back a minute. Okay, so uh, I have been in many cities. Um, so I visited and sat down with uh, Tim and Christian. I don't know if did I talk about that the last. Uh, I don't think I did. So um, so Tim and Christian and I uh, met in a coffee shop. We had some good conversations. It was good to talk to Christian after a lot of uh, you know his model has shown up in many places. And I wanted to you know one thing I wanted to make sure was that he um, was comfortable with all the use of of his. Um, Atlas, which he is, and he's happy about. And um, I've done a couple things, like shared him on the Google Analytics of the of the browser, um, which which he asked for, um, so he can see how many people visit it, um, get a sense of that. Um, and uh, but uh, I think he's 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 happy with that. We talked about um, being able to collect some videos together of um, calcium traces, so that uh, and we talked about whether Wormbase would be the place to do that. Um, and so I shared with him the videos that we've received from Andrew Leifer. Um, and he's looking into that as a potential way to have a repository around that stuff. So that's good. Um, then, um, and and of course, as always, it's good to talk to Tim. But Tim, of course, we talk to you on a regular basis. So, um, but it was it was always good to see um, those guys in person. Um, so um, then, uh, two days ago, I went to Princeton University and sat down with uh, Andrew Leifer, who's the um, first author of one, one of these papers, uh, several papers that we've read, um, also an author of the paper that has the proprioceptive motor neurons, um, and is he's the guy who created the Colbert system um, that uh, allows for dynamic uh, optogenetic stimulation of worms as well as worm tracking um, at high resolution. So, um, so he combines calcium indicators and optogenetics. He's um, got a new appointment at Princeton University for five years. He's just starting up a new lab, and so he is a very good um, friend to have on the biology side. And he also codes. Um, he's written a lot of code himself to make that system work. 
a lot of it is in MATLAB, um, so he's a very good person, a good friend to have. So a couple things that came out of those discussions. So I sat down and, and we talked about a lot of things. One of the things we talked about was if you had a simulation of C. elegans, what kind of things would you like to do? Uh, it's funny, actually, this kind of ties into the conversation we're just having right now about, uh, about Turing tests. But um, so he said, uh, so, you know, I was like, what kind of things would you like to do in your ideal uh, simulator? And he, he put some words together that I think that we've just never quite put together, but we've always had the idea of what to do. Um, but just him saying it kind of helped to make it more explicit. So the terms virtual optogenetics, virtual calcium traces, virtual neuronal ablation, and virtual, you know, touch of the worm. And the last one's not as exciting, but virtual optogenetics, just the, the idea of that is obviously what we've been thinking about from the beginning, but for some reason we've just never said that. We've just never put those terms together. And I think that's very powerful. I think it's a very powerful thing to think about, like, what this model should be able to do. Yes, obviously, it should be able to virtually ablate a neuron. It should be able to virtually stimulate a neuron. It should be able to get virtual calcium traces out that match what people uh, see um, when they're, you know, recording. So those, those are all awesome things for us to think about in the longer term. In the shorter term, um, he's, um, he's got a, a workflow that I think we can help to speed up. So he records from the worm, and then he uses his MATLAB tools to, um, to basically select the part of the neuron that is um, the most responsive to calcium and uses that to generate calcium traces. And, and he uses some image processing to do that, but a lot of it is still a manual step of him going through thousands and thousands of frames of video to select the part of the, part of the uh, neuron that is most responsive to whatever is going on. And I think that we can potentially help by getting some kind of a challenge together. We're kind of like a Netflix. It's very much a Netflix prize kind of a thing because it's a machine learning problem to basically um, have people try to write a better algorithm than uh, manual for finding this uh, area of interest in a neuron trace that he pulls out. This would help us because we would be helping to speed the process of pulling calcium traces out, and it would obviously help him because he doesn't like clicking for thousands and thousands of frames. Um, so that is something that we're talking about. If he can, if he can pull together a training set um, that uh, makes it very obvious what the challenge is, because he does this hand coding, that would be the ground truth for this, this algorithm. We could potentially put it out there um, to even non-biologists um, who just have to understand that it's a very limited machine learning problem. Um, so that was a shorter term thing that we've discussed and, and we'll see um, if we make some progress on that soon. Uh, and then the last thing that we talked about is kind of like, it makes my head spin to think about it, but really we talked about, you know, how we could, how he could help us collect uh, data sets that are more prospective. Because right now we've kind of been, um, you know, um, like, um, We've been begging the community for whatever scraps of data, whatever morsels of data they can they can give us from the table. Um, but we ideally like to move to a place where we're actually helping to, to to collect data that are most relevant to building models. So we sort of talked about what would an Allen Institute approach to novel data collection look like if you could specify what data sets you want to have. Um, what kind of approach would that mean? And we uncovered a lot of challenges. Not the least of which is that we don't have three hundred million dollars like the Allen Institute. But the idea is more just this sort of systematic approach to data collection where you don't necessarily have, it's not really necessarily hypothesis driven, but it's more comprehensive um, and what would be required to do that. And we talked about all sorts of things like, you know, what if there were Princeton undergrads at Princeton University who were, you know, open worm uh, friendly type folks and they came in and used his equipment. Could he train people to do that? And he said he would agree to do that, but, you know, he, he's also setting up a lab and so that's, that's you know, that takes a lot of time. So. Anyway, we talk a lot about this, and I think I'd love to talk more about it as we go down the road. Okay, then um, that afternoon, I visited with Steve Cook. I met him in person as well. Um, I hadn't met him in person before, and we talked about a couple things. One of the things that he said, in addition to, to uh, explaining to me that he's John White's student, which is really cool, is that um, he had a first look at the open source Brain 3D browser and the Connectome in that where you can select the different neurons and he really liked it and then he showed it to, to his advisor Scott Emmons who is the author of a you know recent connectome in the mail uh, wiring diagram paper and he said that um, they thought they both collectively thought that it would be really exciting to actually see the positions of synapses in that visualization because they struggle
to convey where the positions of these neurons are in 3D, in, in 2D, in any, in any D, because they don't have access to, you know, efficient rendering engines. So he said that this would be a way that they would be very excited to get more involved, you know, with NeuroML if they could, you know, get that back out. So um, something for us all to collectively discuss is, you know, if, if it makes sense for um, us to want to push that, that technology forward. Okay, and then finally, um, as I alluded to at the beginning of the um, at the beginning of this talk, um, we're visiting uh, UCL right now. That's where a lot of us are right here. Um, tomorrow we go to Cambridge. Um, so first of all, thanks very much to UCL and the Silver Lab and to Ford for setting us up here, um, giving us some space. Really appreciate that. Um, and thanks very much to Mike uh, tomorrow for um, setting us up at uh, University of Cambridge so that we can visit there. Um, we're basically kind of making a hackathon out of this uh, experience. We're polishing up the paper. Um, we're doing some things with regards to uh, the simulation engine deployment. And um, we're doing some work on the SPH porting. Um, at least that's what we've done so far. Um, and we'll be doing more. And as well, a little bit later, um, we're going to go and, and meet uh, some other community members here and, and get dinner and such. So for those of you not here in London, I'm sorry. I, I look forward to getting us all together soon. Um, we're going to try to be very transparent about all the things that we accomplish here starting now. So uh, let's, let me shut up and let's go around then to uh, folks uh, and see what kind of other updates there are outside. So let's start with the folks who aren't in the room since we've all been talking, um, which I guess we didn't get Andre in the end. That's too bad. So Sergey, you're on deck, sir. Um, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. Good. What's new? Uh, about fluid booted. I wrote uh, a mail, everyone. Uh, also, I working on uh, a configuration generator, uh, which should uh, generate configuration for SPH uh, engine. And, uh, I'm pretty close to end of this and soon I, maybe tomorrow, maybe Monday, I'll put it somewhere where everybody can take it and look. It look. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'm doing it on Python. It's not a problem uh, for everyone. I I think or should I <laughs> do something else? You doing doing what in Python? Uh, configuration generator. Matteo Giovanni say it's great. Any language? Okay. Uh, that's all I think. Okay. Yep. So we also saw the um, the comparisons between bullet and bullet fluids and uh, and what we have here, which is also good. You know that we're okay. outperforming that. So that's very good. Um, do you know Do you know where Andre is or anything about how he's doing? Uh, I think he sleep. Uh, maybe I don't know. Okay. No worries. Okay. Very good. Uh, well, um, these guys are going to have some stuff to say here about SPH. Actually, maybe that's good to, to go to next. Giovanni and Mike, do you guys want to report it? You can unmute that. Okay. Somebody else zoom in? Yeah, now it should be fine. So, yeah, still working on the SPH porting and um, Getting closer, Mike today helped me troubleshoot some error. Basically, I I made a mistake porting the the boundary particle generation. Um, we, we we basically debugged it for a while and I troubleshooted, found the error. It was something trivial, but it actually took a while to find it. So now it visualizes the, the ported version in Geppetto Java. He actually, we are able to visualize a complete boundary, which uh, I was trying to get that to work for the last two weeks or so. 
and we finally managed to do that today. And now we're fine with increasingly high uh, particle count. So yeah, that's good news. We also put a, a, partic a liquid particle in it, and it didn't crash, which is good news. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's all. Most of that progress, I've been working on that for a while, but today we actually managed to, to get it to run um, with the full bounder. Uh, and the bounder, uh, we, we like resolved this thing about the boundary uh, particle count. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much everything in terms of the progress on this SPH stuff. And it would be awesome when uh, Sergey is finished with this Python script about uh, because basically we, once we have that we can integrate the elastic connection data at the moment we only we're, we're only running tests with, with liquid particles so that's uh, that would be awesome because we could just look at that and generate the configuration or the scene uh, including uh, elastic connections data that's pretty much everything. Cool. Mike? OK, so since the last Hangout, I've mainly been working on and trying to get the deployment for Geppetto to work on my machine. I was actually trying to modify it, just trying to see if, if it was installable. So far, I've not succeeded. Uh, well, I have, but the SPH bit is still not working. We need to understand why that is. Um, <clears throat> I've also just been working on libneuromel. So those are the two things that I've been working on, and obviously today I've been helping Giovanni diagnose this problem with the SPH, which now appears to be resolved. What are you doing with libneuromel? Um, right now I'm doing quite a large refactoring of it. Really? Yeah. What? To why? To what end? Um... Pardon? Make it work for, for normal too, more efficient. Make it more more efficient, more more, more uh, understandable, more extensible. Uh, yeah, just make it better. I'm I'm quite close. It's, ba it's basically done. It's just a case of writing some u unit tests and you know getting the documentation up to scratch. Just those you know it's the eighty twenty thing, um, and I probably just put some work into it this weekend because I'm, I've am self-imposed a deadline for the 26th when we're having a meeting about NeuroML, so I'd really like to get it done for then, for the 26th. Um, that's really with a view to to uh, continuing my work on Pyramidal, which uses LibNeuroML as a backend. This is the Python. This is, li this is Python, not NeuroML yeah, library. Yeah, because there's also Java. Yeah, I just didn't want to put my... I know, but try it. And that's yes. what I want to talk about. No, 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 go now, go now, go now. No, I, I was just asking about uh, linear man because there are two of them. One is Python, one is Java, but the Java one is no more. Is no more. And I just wanted to make sure that Mike wasn't working with the Java one. So sorry for looking at the wrong place. It's very difficult to look at the camera when the person that I'm talking to is behind me. <laughs> no, I'm working on. I'm definitely. I'm working on the Python one. Okay. Um, this. I mean, my main motivation is 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 a selfish one. I want to get Pyramidal to work, and um, no, no, that's you know, it could probably be like eighty percent of Pyramidal is near ML, and so I wanted to have a really nice, efficient, understandable. And not sure if they can. And, yeah. I've been working on that, and this is this is pretty relevant to the open world project, especially if if uh, Pyramidal has a wrapper into Geppetto, so we can get up and running with a multi-compartmental uh, simulator until until we have something native. So uh, yeah, that's okay. what I've been doing. Great, uh, Matteo, maybe you should be there. You should be there. Uh. Yes, so I've been, I started uh, doing a couple of things. So I updated the um, NeuroML bundle for Geppetto to use the, um, basically I, I, I started renaming it to org.geppetto.model.neuroml. You'll have to rename eventually all the bundles 
that uh, we have there that at the moment are called the .openworm simulation engine and one of the nice outcomes of the renaming is that it's going to be easier to see the bundles in GitHub because the name is not going to be too long. And so I started uh, with the NeuroML bundle and uh, I started also creating the wrapper for JLAMS. So I created another bundle that now exists in the repository called the org.gepeto.solver.jlams. And uh, I added some tests which are not uh, working at the moment. I just I, I need to fix how to basically uh, fit the component the LAMS component types to the in this other way that I'm using JLAMS as opposed to the canonical way that it was used and uh, on Monday I will uh, talk to Robert Cannon as well so that I will try and get exactly how to fix the problem that I'm having if we need to add something uh, and to put maybe an API layer on top of what we have. Uh, do you have jpeto.org? What does it what do you mean for it? Do you own the domain? No. No. Is yeah. it available? Is it available? I, don't know. I, I never looked at it. Okay. okay. But otherwise, the, um, the other thing I was doing today was to, um, well, beside the other bits here and there, I started to look at uh, what is the best way to have our own Maven repository so that we can start putting all the bundles we have in some place that then we can reference from the form. And that is ongoing. We um, might do it through Sonatype. We, I need to complete the analysis and see what are the problems and cause of doing it uh, through GitHub or through Sonatype. Cool. OK. Um, Tim, I know you're going to be in and out here, but did you want to you want to say something here now um, at this point? Tim? Oh, he's on a call. Okay, we'll come back. We'll come back around to you then. So uh, maybe port. Hello. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, today, particularly, uh, one thing I've been working on is trying to tidy up some of the Python scripts for having just a single file where it will pull the latest version of Virgo uh, along with all the relevant repositories, build them. Stephen had a script for that, uh, which I've just updated to the latest version of Virgo and the latest number of repositories. Uh, that has been moved to the org. The openworm slash openworm on GitHub uh, just needs another little bit of tidying up, but um, it works much better now. What I want to do as well is make a, a script there which will pull all the clone all the repositories, pull the latest version, build them all, and deploy them to the correct location. And that will be much better than for having a kind of shared development environment that people can contribute to and make it a lot easier for people to get the latest version of code and test it out in lots of different systems. Uh, so that should, in the next day or two, be fairly stable. Uh, it might be a good point at that stage, once that script is there, to change all the repositories to org.gepetto and then have people test it on their local systems rather than check out the org.simulation uh, engine, etc. Um, otherwise, yes, just yesterday, actually, I updated the Neuroconstruct project, uh, made a few changes. Uh, one thing that's been bugging me for a while was the use of um, things like uh, glutamate underscore gj for some of the connections. So the gap junctions were named, uh, the synapses between them, even though they were electrical connections, they were named gap glutamate underscore gap gj and acetylcholine underscore GJ, even though these aren't the uh, chemical transmitters that are used in electrical synapses, there's no chemical transmitters, but um, it just meant from the spreadsheet it was named that way because they were gap junctions coming from neurons whose principal neurotransmitter was glutamate or acetylcholine or whatever else. So I, I renamed those in the 
new construct project to all have kind of generic underscore gap junction. So that's taken out something there. At least people won't be um, confused when they download the code and look at the connections. Um, not too much else otherwise OpenWorm specific, but uh, uh, we have been doing a little bit to update the open source brain website. Um, one thing that's relevant for OpenWorm is there's a flag there now saying that uh, the curation level of the OpenWorm project is one star out of three to emphasize the fact that um, it's um, not a full complete model of the worm and don't think it is. Uh, a lot of, most of the projects actually are one star out of three or two stars out of three. So it, well, I think it was important just to emphasize that, that uh, if somebody downloads and thinks that it's a full model and starts criticizing us. Um, the one other little bit of work I've been doing that's relevant is tidying up some of the Java uh, modules specific for um, NeuroML, so org.neuroml.model and so on. A lot of these are t more tidied up now and uh, we'll make these easier to integrate these with uh, the OpenWorm uh, modules and myself and Mateo have been talking about making it easy to, easier to pull these from a central repository. So it'll be better to actually um, easier able to pull these down and get uh, Geppetto and NeuroML and Lens to work together nicely. Are we, are we talking about modules in Geppetto? Modules, modules as in a uh, an individual repository with a single Maven, um, Maven project. Uh, but all of these nicely working together, referencing each other, and um, referencing the latest versions, and Lens as well as Move now to Maven. Um, so if we have a bunch of these that are working together nicely, it will uh, make it easier to use these across projects. Um, and finally, uh, the there has been a lot more stability now with Lens, and there is effectively a UML 2 beta release. Um, now, there's a few more small things to tidy up, but so uh, most of the code that's available for NeuroML 2 has moved to NeuroML 2 Beta. Um, and we're just in the process of making sure all the open, open source brain projects are also NeuroML 2 Beta and the libraries are updated. So is that up on open source brain somewhere that people can look at it? Uh, the new beta, or is it not uh, released it's yet? The, uh, it's on the, yeah. It's, yeah, I've updated the uh, NeuroML.org. Okay, he's he's still in the room, but uh, his his hangout crashed. So, was that the last thing you were going to say, though? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, <laughs> Tim, are you are you uh, available now? Oh, you look more available. No, nope, still not. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's see. Uh, well, Balash, you're you're a visitor uh, to this to this hangout. You're not always in the hangout. But do uh, you want to say anything here to uh, uh, our adoring fan? Oh, the one the one viewer we had left us. But uh, <laughs> to, to the other folks who are uh, far away. Well, we are just finishing up the paper. I think we are uh, definitely making good progress with it. Uh, it's it's converging somewhere. Uh, we are not just quite there yet to to submit, but I think I think we are making good progress. Basically, me and Stu went through it today. And we have identified a few issues, but the point is, as those issues are getting more minor, and uh, uh, yeah, it's it, it's heading somewhere. Uh, tomorrow, Cambridge all of us are going to sit down together and discuss the paper from A to Z. We're going to go through it uh, all together. Um, we're going to polish it up, and then what we discussed is that uh, we're going to distribute it to a few scientists. Uh, for example, Nata Cohen, who studies C elegance in Leeds. Uh, Barbara Webb, she's a professor of biorobotics in Edinburgh, and uh, uh, well, she's she's just uh, very sympathetic to the project and to my supervisor, Matt Nolan. So a few people in academia get their feedback. I'm sure they're going to have some good ideas. We're going to work it into the paper. Again, one more round of polishing, and then uh, we're going to submit it. Uh, so it, it's a slow process, but we are making progress. Uh, so that's 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 everything about me. I would also say, although the, the, the manuscript is not shared publicly, um, just because you know it's going to be a publication, 
Um, for those folks here in the project, it is it is still available via Drive. I think we've just shared it with individual members. Um, and if you did want to comment on it, um, the latest version that's in Drive is the latest version. So um, Mike, Tim, Sergey, you guys, if you guys want to comment on it, feel free to just you know, go through and add, add comments. It's still not, not too late. Um, but it is kind of converging. So, um, yeah, and please do that. I mean, the more people are going to read it, the more comments you're going to have. The, the, back, the battle of the paper is, is going to be... I mean, we, we had some long arguments here in the room, and I'm pretty sure tomorrow is going to be the tough day. But I, I think it, it, it's all going to make the paper better, and, and, and that's the point. We have a, a good publication at the end of it. Uh, so please argue, please read it, and comment. Great. OK. Um, wow. Did we really go around, everybody, in <laughs> only 40 minutes? OK. That was very efficient. Um, <laughs> um, OK, so look, um, I, I, so we're probably going to go over this uh, in, in the room. But I, we, rather than just calling it closed right now, I just want to focus everyone on the milestones again. We are, this is what, February, and release four stretches to June. Um, so we have a set of milestones that are up on the site. And I just kind of wanted to just read through those milestones so that we can just revise and readjust and, and see if, that, if those are still making sense with what we're actually doing. So um, let me just uh, point to those real fast here so that we can see. And if uh, even if you guys are doing some SBA stuff, I'd ask you to check back in on this uh, just real quick, because uh, this will take like five minutes, OK? So of the, of the milestones that we set to do, um, a neuropeptide database is one that um, we still um, need, need to, uh, I think, start closing some of the issues, although we have made uh, quite a bit of progress in terms of having a spreadsheet. By the way, consolidating spreadsheets is something that we listed as something we want to work on um, while we're here. So, uh, so Porig, you and I, um, hopefully we'll get a chance to do that. Um, Ion Channel Database, similarly, is another sort of data project. Uh, data visualization, I want to just comment on this, that we actually have some external um, contributions on the, on these issues. So another gentleman, uh, Gaston Gentile, who's sort of using this project as his opportunity to learn Python for the first time, um, which is totally cool, um, has been contributing um, to that, where we've been ev working ever closer to getting a visualization of the list of cells that we have. Um, publish the prospectus paper is a big milestone, and we've been um, steadily working towards that. And hopefully, we'll have a draft out of this meeting. Synapse position crowdsourcing is always sort of a slow process, but I think we now have a, a clearer path with the data that we received from Steve Cook a few weeks ago. Um, and we'll be talking more about that while we're here. Uh, documentation and packaging. Um, there's really a lot of issues. We should actually start closing some of these. Um, I guess I've been creating a lot of these issues. But um, actually consolidating the spreadsheets into one is under here. Um, releasing a fabric script that loads, lo loads the latest simulation engine packages on EC2 is one that's related to our what we're doing now. Um, so those are getting done. Um, muscle cell model output closely matches that of real data. So this is one with Mike. I know that we're taking a long path around um, the NeuroML and those sorts of things. But let's not forget that we do um, want to get to some of those additional issues that you filed. Find neuroreceptors and synaptic information for MDL08 muscle cell. We started that actually in the last two weeks. Develop a strip mathematical definition for goodness of fit for experimental data versus model and build simulation which simulates full experimental protocol. Okay. Um, updating the NeuroML Connecto model. Made some progress on that this sprint. Muscle cell bridges cell mem mechanics and membrane electrophysiology and integrated model. What do we have under there? A lot of issues from Mike. Automated optimization for development of integrated worm. So highly simplified proof of concept electromechanical worm. So there's a lot of things here. And Mike, I don't know, do you still are these still things that you're interested in, actually? Um, uh, so these are all things that I'm doing. You are? Which is okay. the route I'm taking to do, and it's kind of longer than going to do between getting a little near a map of things. So you can run the proper one to the back, but in this case, you can easily work back. So. Okay. So it's a long route, but it's the right. Okay. Route. Okay, that's totally cool. Just want to make sure you know, we're just, just on track. Okay. Just kind of Okay. Um, 
on the mechanics engine, solve the PCI SPH integration problem. I don't have to say a lot about that. I know that we're all, there's actually a large effort now on, on SPH between the porting and the efforts that are still happening um, back in, in Siberia. Um, the multi-compartmental neuronal sol solver. So yeah, that's actually a point. Um, hey, Mateo. Um, so we had a meeting about this, uh, I think, in the last print, possibly, or before that. And we had some directions on that. Um, and what you're doing now with um, going back and, and uh, wrapping LEMS, I think, is related to that, right? Yeah, so, OK. So those are, and those are yeah, what you're doing and, and making progress there. We do want to loop in this other gentleman, Jim Lacey. That's right. That's one thing I did not update everybody on. I, I met one-on-one -on -one with him, um, and I directed him to install the simulation engine. And that's what you know, he, he did on the list. So when we talk to him later today, we can start from that point and to figure out how maybe he can help with some of this. So be thinking about what pieces of what you're doing make, us, make sense to, and I think we have some discussions about this, but um, we'll see him in another hour or so. Um, and then G Geppetto platform, first release. Um, we've closed some issues here. Um, it looks like for this first release, the things that are left are things more like documentation and renaming bundles. OK. OK, so that's these are OK, could you add that? He just said that uh, yeah, the script that we're working on should be in there. OK, Geppetto plugin fluid mechanics solver. That's also under SPH we're doing that. And then update open worm website. Um, the only reason this isn't closed, because we, we do have a new website, is that we're still holding it open for some issues related to um, translation, um, which is kind of in the court of one of our volunteers. Um, but uh, he said he, he will get to that and work on that soon. So OK, good. Thank you for bearing with me for an additional five minutes or so to review these things. I just think it's always good to take a step back and look at the big picture of what the milestones are and where we're going and uh, how the individual steps that we're taking down in the details relate to the bigger picture. So. OK, good. So Tim, still on the call? Uh, yes? No, OK. I got a break for a second. <laughs> you think you got a break? Yeah, just for a second, yeah. Okay, do you want to, is there anything you want to say in No, I, I really didn't have much to add. I mean, I've been working on some, some of the data representation and stuff, but uh, just haven't made a lot of progress. It's, every time I do something, I spend a few hours doing it, and then I look at it and say, this sucks. So I, I, I decided to try to do something else. But uh, What about the web-based uh, version of that uh, visualizer that you showed me when we met well, together? Yeah, I mean, I, I can go ahead and throw that out. Uh, but to me, it's just it's just so cluttered that I don't really know if it, does as much good. Oh, I, I can send that. Uh, or who should I send it to? Like Mateo or you can, you can just send it around to the. I mean, you can team. post it in Dropbox yeah. and, and post on the list um, if you don't want to circulate it too widely. But I think it's it's cool enough that you know we should just you can have a look at it. Oh yeah, I have no issue with that. I I just personally didn't think that it uh, really represents the data very well because it's going everywhere. Okay. Well, I mean, I'll, but, I'll but, leave it. But up I'll to let you guys too. decide that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. Sure. Sorry. Sorry about the fact that I've been kind of. Oh no 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 no! Not, 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 not a problem at all. Okay. Good. Well, uh, does anybody else in the room have anything to add for the good of the order? Oh. Well, all right. Well, we will call this a quick one. We will break. Thanks. Thanks, folks, for joining, and um, uh, we will meet again in another few weeks. Okay. Bye. Bye.